We're glad to see each and every one of you in the house of the Lord. We've come ready to worship the Lord tonight. Amen. Praise God. I've come inspecting. Amen. I've come inspecting great things tonight, and I believe God's going to move and touch us in this house tonight. For the same God that was in this house this morning, it's the same God that I feel in this house right now. Amen. Stand with me all over the house tonight. We want to open up the word of prayer tonight. Let's pray together. Lord, we come before you tonight. Lord, so thankful for this great blessing that you've given to us. Lord, to be in your house tonight. God, we just pray, Lord, that you touch and move in this place. God, we pray for a mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost to fall in this house tonight. God, we pray that you touch and minister to the hearts, to the needs of your people that's in this house, to those with us by way of live stream. God, we pray you minister to them tonight. And God, we just pray that not our will, but that your will shall be done in this service. And we give you glory and praise and honor for what you're going to do in this place tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Let's put our hands together tonight. Give the Lord great praise. Amen. Come on, Brother Joe. This is you, brother.
Like we've got several here tonight that's on the firing line. I tell you what, I, I love when people are faithful to a church. I'm going to take up a prayer request tonight and just continue. Remember Jimmy Huddleston. He's in really, really serious condition. And also Jody, Brenda's daughter, really hold her up in prayer tonight. Any others? I just ask to remember my sister Grace. Lord, touch her. Any others tonight? Okay. Yeah, just really hope, remember that you pray for these. Others. Okay. Others to that. Yes. Yeah, remember Sister Kay say yeah. Any others? Hey, let's all stand and take these seeds for the Lord. Lord, once again, we come to you. So thank the Lord that you never get tired of us coming. Lord, and ask it and plead him, Lord. That all these people, Lord, that need to touch. Lord, they're so sick, they're hurting. Lord, they have no hope. And the only hope we have, they have now is in you. Lord, we pray for Jimmy Hobbs tonight. Lord, it don't look good for him. But Lord, we know the one that can heal and save. Lord, we pray for him. Pray for Sister Jody, Lord. Pray for her. Pray for Jamie Shearer. Lord, give her help. Lord, need other requests, Lord. We pray for them. Lord, we pray for Stephen Kay. Lord, we pray for them, spoke for their plan. Lord, you know what they are. Lord, we pray for them. Lord, let you pray that you touch my sister's grace. Lord, she had slipped in. Lord, let you pray healing for her body. Lord, us, Lord, each and every request given in. Lord, we just pray for her. Lift them up before you. And give you thanks, Lord. God, Lord, you said if we agree on anything, Lord, you would do it. And that's what we're believing now. We're going to believe we're going to do the world. And we thank you, Jesus. Holy name. Amen. Okay, 
you're going to take up your Sunday night offering. Brother Philip, would you come and pray the blessing over the offering night? Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, as we come before you tonight, God, with thankful hearts, just thanking you for each step that we take, Father, and just thanking you for your mercy and grace. And Lord, we just thank you for this church and the way we're headed. And Father, we just give you praise and honor and glory for each and everything we do. Father, we just pray for this congregation tonight. We know their sickness and hurt. And Father, we pray for our nation. We just pray that your will be done. We pray tonight for this service, Father. We just pray that the message that you've sent is one that we need to hear. And, Lord, again, we just thank you for this church. Father, we just thank, pray a uh, blessing on this offering tonight. And, Lord, we just pray that it will be used to further your kingdom. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Darren Snow, will you come up here a minute? <laughs> Darren told us the other night a little bit about what he's been going through, and uh, it's just a blessing, everything that's happened to Darren. Darren come to my shop when he's 14 year old and asked me for a job, and he's 54 and he's still in me. He's, he's, uh, but Darren, tell the people what the doctor told you when you first went to him on cancer. Well, uh, the first thing he said is one of the worst kinds of cancer, a non-small cell. I don't know if y'all are familiar with the cancer or not, but in the fourth stage, and, you know, I just lost all hope right then, but I tried to keep my head up, and... Uh, go from there but that doctor said we'd fight it and so far it's doing pretty good uh, when, the, when Darren came to me that day and told me what the doctor told him he said he, he, he did, just going to do the best he could and uh, I said well Darren I know a man that can take care of this and Darren tried a church over in Columbia where he knew some people and it just didn't work out for him, and he'd hear me talk about Bernard Ridge, and uh, he said, I think I'll go over and try it and just tell the people what you think about Bernard Ridge. It's the most amazing bunch of people I've ever met. For one, just glad to be here, and y'all gonna have to bear with me till I get over my sickness and stuff, but I'll be seeing you a lot. Now tell them about your last report, what the doctor told you. Uh, it was 30% uh, shrunk my cancer was and you know who you give thanks to for that are you here to stay Darren yes sir <laughs> we're always thankful for a healing testimony ain't we Helps build everybody's faith. Hey, we're going to start our special singing, and any of our young ladies want to sing? Audrey, you going to sing? I like it when they're ready to sing.
ain't came from love and not to kid you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sister Mick, you gonna come sing? I'm going home with Jesus in the twinkling of an eye. I made my reservation for a mansion in the sky. I may not know the moment or I may not know the day, but I know that I'll be leaving when he calls his church away. If I'm listening for the trumpet to sound most any time and a crown of life that's waiting, thank God we'll soon be got my invitation through a place called Calvary by the precious blood of Jesus this trip's been paid for me I'm going home with Jesus in the twinkling of an eye I've made my reservation for a mansion in the sky I may not know the moment or I may not know the day but I know that I'll be leaving when he calls his church away captain of the vessel he's calling get on board the destination's heaven safe on that crystal shore where we'll meet with our dear savior and our loved ones who have gone and we'll live through all eternity thank god i'm going home i'm going home with jesus in the twinkling of an eye well, i've made my reservation for a mansion in the sky i may not know the moment or i may not know the day but i know that i'll be leaving when he calls his church away i'm going home with jesus in the twinkling of an eye i've made my reservation for a mansion in the sky i may not know the moment or i may not know the day but i know that i'll be leaving when he calls his church away thank you sister me sister joyce wilson would you come sing for us tonight Hate to get you off guard. <laughs> We'd love to hear you tonight. be ready. <laughs> I appreciate the Lord uh, tonight. Uh, I want to thank him for always being there for me and meeting all my needs. And Even when I don't feel him, I know he's there because he said he'd never leave me. You know, I take that with me every day. He'll never leave me. It don't matter what I'm going through. It don't matter what I'm facing. He'll never leave me. He's the same God today as he was yesterday. and He'll be the same God tomorrow. I'm glad I know that in my heart because I know Things come up, and we get to facing things and struggles, but when we know God is real and He's still there, He'll never leave us, but He'll make a way. And I will thank God today for carrying me up, carrying me. He's carried me many a time. Life is easy when you're up on that mountain and you've got peace. Of mine, like you've never known, but it's when things change and 
you get in the valley don't lose your faith for you are never alone for the God on the mountain is still God in the valley when things go wrong I know you make them all right and the God We can talk with faith when, when we're up on that mountain, cause the talk comes easy when life's at its best, but it's down in those dark valleys of your trials and temptation, hallelujah. Oh, that's where you see your faith is. It's really put to, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. But the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. Oh, when things go wrong, oh, I know you'll make them all right. And the God of the good times is still gone in the bad times for the God of the day. He's still gone in the night. We can talk with a lot of faith when, oh, when we're up on that mountain. Oh, hallelujah, you see, it comes easy. Cause life's at its best. But it's in those dark valleys of your trials and temptations. You see, that's where your faith is really put to the test. But the God on the mountain is to God in the valley. Oh, when things go wrong, I know you make them all right. Oh, hallelujah, God of the good times. Oh, Lord, you're still God in the bad times. Oh, the God of the day. Oh, he's still God in the night. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Sister Joyce. I love that song. Lord Charles Joyce, our pastor. How many knows he's still God? Amen. Amen. Let's give him a hand clap of praise tonight. <laughs> praise the Lord. He's still God. He's the God of the day. Amen. He's the God of the valley. He's the God of the mountain. Whatever place you're in, he's God. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's there. Amen. Praise the Lord. You have your Bibles tonight. Stand with me. Let's go to the book of Nehemiah, if you will. Chapter 4. Begin read with verse number one. Book of Nehemiah, chapter four. Begin read with verse number one. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say glory. glory. Amen. Praise God. The Lord inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. I said the Lord inhabits. That word inhabits means he comes down and dwells. 
Hallelujah. In the midst of his people. Praise God. Praise God. As I often say, when the, when the praises go up, the blessings will come down. Amen. Praise God. We want more of him. Praise him more. Amen. Want to see more? Just begin to praise him more. Want to put the devil on the run? Just start praising God. Amen. Want to run the devil out of your house? Just start praising God. Amen. He said, where I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Amen. Praise God. That's what we've come to do tonight, to lift up the holy name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Praise God. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse number 1. When you have it, say amen. But it came to pass that when Sambal had heard that we build the walls, he was wroth, took great indignation, and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he, he, he shall even break down their stone wall. Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity, and cover not their iniquity. And let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So built we the wall. Hallelujah. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. Hallelujah. Lord, we come before you tonight. We're so grateful, so thankful for your presence. God, I pray, Lord, for the next few moments, God, as I preach and deliver your word tonight, I pray, God, that not our will, but that your will shall be done in this service tonight. God, I pray for your strength. God, I pray for a great anointing, God, to fall like rain in this house tonight. God, I feel your power. I feel your anointing tonight. God, and I know that you're here to do a great and mighty work in this place tonight. And we give you glory and praise and honor for it. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Give him praise tonight as you're being seated. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I want to preach on a thought tonight. Stay on the wall. Stay on the wall. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, stay on the wall. We, we notice that Nehemiah was a man that had been serving in the Persian court as the king's cupbearer. Cupbearers were always important people unto the king. And Nehemiah was a man of great importance unto the king. He was a man of deep religious conviction that manifested himself in his zealous work that he had in his heart for the kingdom of God. We find Nehemiah that while serving in the court of the king, that he was a man that became saddened when he had heard that the walls of Jerusalem had been reduced to the piles of rubble and that the gates had been burned with fire. So Nehemiah, four months, he was a man that prayed and fasted before God concerning the situation that he knew of. Nehemiah, as a cupbearer, had the ear of a king, but more importantly, he had the ear of an almighty God. Hallelujah. We find that the king granted Nehemiah's request to leave the glory of the royal palace and to go and to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Now in the rebuilding of the walls, Nehemiah was a man that faced much opposition. Satan done everything in his power to try to stop the work. And I've always found that anytime God's people rise to work, that the enemy 
always wants to rise to wreck the work of God. Hallelujah. The enemy has I preached this morning. He has one goal. He's got a mission and a purpose in mind. And that is to destroy the work of God. But aren't you thankful tonight that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world? Hallelujah. Can somebody give him praise tonight? Amen. We find in verse one, number one of our text, Scripture says that when Sambal had heard that they were building the wall, that he was wroth, and he took great indignation, took great measures, and he mocked the Jews. Uh -huh. We find that the two chief enemies of Nehemiah was Sambal and Tobiah. They were two men that poured mockery upon Nehemiah. They made a joke and a mockery of the entire work that Nehemiah was doing. Sambal in about words in verse number two of our text, he made the statement, do you really think that you're going to be able to build something out of the rubbish and out of the burnt ashes? Tobiah, in other words, in verse 3, he said, even if you build something, it will be so weak and so flimsy that even a fox jumping on it will cause it to crumble, to crumble. Really what he was saying, what can be done with these old burnt stones? You see, the enemy, he works the same today as he thrives to use the mockery of this world that is against the church to come against the church of the living God to conquer the child of God. Hallelujah. But if there's ever a time that we need to have a made up mind and a mind to work to say live, die, seek, or swim I'm going on for Jesus just the same. Hallelujah. I'm not a conqueror tonight but the word of God says that I am more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. I am victorious. I am victorious by the power of God. Amen. Praise God. Nehemiah, we find that he began to pray in verse number four of our text. Uh, how did he begin to pray and he brought his case to God? He brought his case to God in faith that God would vindicate the work. The Bible says that the people had a mind to work. If there's ever a time that we must have a mind to work, it is now. Uh, I said if there's ever a time that the people of God must have a mind to work it is now they saw that their nation was in trouble they saw an urgent need it became such a burden unto Nehemiah that it affected his countenance so much that the king even noticed his sadness but God had put this mission and this work in the heart of Nehemiah don't you know tonight at the great commission it should be in our heart to fulfill I said the great commission of the kingdom of God it should be in our heart to fulfill hallelujah to say I've got a made a man I've got a man to work and I'm going to see it that the work and the call of God is completed upon my life amen somebody praise him tonight. Oh God. They had a mind to work. We've got to have a mind to work today. In a world that is sin sick, we've got to have a mind to work to stay on the wall. Uh, I said in a world that's sin sick we got to stay on the wall in a world to where men wants to become women and women wants to become men got to stay on the wall hallelujah in a world to where boys and girls that they confuse about their identity we got to stay on the wall in a world and in a day to where people and business alike is compromising their standards 
we've got to have a mind to work and we got to stay on the wall. I come to tell you tonight that there is a call and to the wall. I said there's a call of God and to the wall to do the work of the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise God. Oh, help us, Lord. We got work to do. I said we got work to do. Uh, there's more to do than just gossip. I'm on preach tonight. It's already quiet anyhow. So I'm going to pour it out tonight. There's more to do than nitpick. Praise God. There's more to do than talk about the color of the carpet or the color of the paint on the walls. We live in a world and in a nation that is in trouble. I said this, a nation that is in trouble. Our God, we live in a place that needs revival. Our community needs revival. Our nation needs revival. We've got to have a move of the power of God in our land. Amen. Praise God. Oh, God, we got to have a mind to work. Because yeah. all of these things is going to pass away. Uh -huh. We've got loved ones that's dying going to a devil's hell. Uh -huh. Got to stay on the wall. I said, I got to stay on the wall. Too many folks today compromising their standards and coming off of the wall just like they tried to do unto Nehemiah. But Nehemiah said, I'm not leaving the wall. I'm not coming off of the wall because there's a call unto the wall. There is a call of God upon my life unto the wall. I've got to do the work of the kingdom of God. Now, chapter 2 in Nehemiah, verse 12. He said, and I rose in the night. I and some few men with me. Neither told I any man what God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. I noticed what he said. I never told any man what God had put, oh glory, in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Oh, it was more than just to talk about it. It was in his heart. Oh, glory to God. It should not only be in our minds, but always should be in our hearts. To do the work of the kingdom of God. Oh, it should be in our hearts to worship him. It should be in our hearts to praise him. Our blessed God shouldn't have to pump him prime. It should be in our hearts. My Lord, to please God and to follow his plan. And to be obedient unto the will and the purpose of God upon our life. It should be in our hearts. It should be our heartbeat to please him. Have you ever noticed when something gets in somebody's heart, they do it? When it really gets in your heart, they do it. Because it's their heartbeat. Hello. It's their heartbeat. You know, when you hear people, how many times you heard people giving assistance and helping other people, and they made the statement, it was really in my heart to do that. God laid that on my heart to do that. Nehemiah was saying, it's in my heart. Oh, glory to God. I know what Sambalat is saying. I know what Tobiah is saying. I know everybody thinks I'm going to fail. But, oh, it's in my heart. Hallelujah. And I know that when God calls, he equips. And I know that if God is in it, if it is his will, it shall be completed. And God will see me through. Amen. Somebody praise him in this house. Oh, God. Got to get in our heart. It needs to be in our heart to worship. It, it should be in our heart to praise Him. 
Somebody say, let me ask you, who woke you up this morning? Who woke you up this morning? Who brought you back here tonight? Hello? Who's been walking with you all day long? Who gave you the health and the ability today to live another day? Oh, somebody help me. Come on, preach with me. Who gave you the health and the ability to see another day? Oh, God did. Oh, and therefore, I God, if he don't never touch me again, I got more than enough to praise him for. I got more than enough to worship him. I got, if he never does another thing unto my life, I got more than enough to worship and to praise my heavenly Father. Amen. Praise God. Oh, God, help us. Help us, Lord. Got to get in our hearts. I found out, you know, when you worship with your heart, it's a difference. You know, instead of when the preacher's up here saying, come on, praise him. Somebody praise him. Come on, somebody praise him. You come to the doors. And you sit down on your seat. And you tell your neighbor, you better be careful tonight. I was getting tore up here tonight. Yeah, Yeah, I get tore up. Don't you pay no mind to me. But oh, it's in my heart. It's in my heart. It's in my heart. Hallelujah. I'm going to give my testimony before I leave this house tonight. Because it's my heartbeat. The Lord's been so good to me that I cannot tell it all. And it's in my heart to worship and to praise my Heavenly Father. Amen. Praise God. Oh, it's in my heart. It's in my heart. Oh. Yeah. In my heart to praise him. Oh. It's in my heart to praise him. The Lord inhabits the praises of his people. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be. Oh, glory to God. I thank God for what he done in this house this morning, but I come looking for greater tonight. I said I come looking for greater tonight. I know there's fewer in number here tonight, but God's here. I said God's here. How do you know? Because I brought him with me. Hallelujah. I come. This is his house. And I come to praise him. I come to praise my God. I feel the Holy Ghost. I come to praise and to magnify his holy name. Amen. Glory to God. Because it's in my heart. Somebody said, Preacher, I want to know your heart, doctor. Because if you can carry on the way you do, he's got to be a good one. Yeah. Oh. And, and I said, I said, God brought healing through the hands of the physician, but God is my ultimate healer. God, oh, glory to God. I'm congested. I've got the runny nose, all that other stuff, same stuff everybody else has got. But, oh, I got something stirred inside of me tonight. I got something stirred in my heart tonight. Hallelujah. And I'm not Peter and John. I got to can't help us. I can't help but to thank him. I can't help but to thank the Lord. I can't help but to praise and to worship my heavenly Father. Amen. I can't help it. Oh, glory. How you think Nehemiah feel? I can't help but to do what I'm doing. I got to do it. I got to do it. People had a mind to work. We got to do it. Now, there was, there was a spirit of discouragement that came against them. Uh-huh. The Bible says in Judah said in verse 10 of chapter 4, Judah said the strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed and there's much rubbish. Now notice what they said. So that we are not able to build the wall. 
Uh-huh. Verse 11, and they said, and our adversaries said, they shall not know neither seed till we come in the midst of them and slay them and cause the world to see. So Judah, who's Judah? It's the choir. Judah's the praise team. Judah's the one. Then Judah says, oh, he can't do that. Judah's then saying, our adversaries is going to overtake us. They're going to come in the midst of us, and they're going to slay us, and the work is going to cease. But in verse 6, verse 6, the Bible says the people had a mind to work. But notice what they said in verse number 15 of chapter 4. Follow along with me. That we return all of us to the wall. Everyone unto his work. Uh-huh. Verse 17, they said, They which build on the wall, and they that bear burdens, with those that lead it, every one with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. So with one hand they worked on the wall, and the other hand they fought against the enemy with a weapon. Hallelujah. Got to stay on the wall. I said, I got to stay on the wall. I got work with one hand and worship with another. Work with one hand and fight the devil with the other hand. But stay on the wall. Amen. Praise God. Oh, help us, Lord. Can you see? Can you see? They are working on the wall with one hand. But they got a mind to work. Because his inner heart has got to be done. It's got to be done. Don't you know that the harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. I got God's looking for laborers. God's looking for workers. God's looking for fighters in the harvest field that will say, I will work until the day that the Lord returns. I'm going to work in the kingdom of God. Hey, you got to learn. You got to learn. You got to be like Judy. You got to learn the art of self encouragement. Hello. Notice what David said. Why art, why art thou cast down in Psalm 42 and 11? He said, Why art thou cast down on my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, he said, for I shall yet praise him. Who's the health of my countenance and my God? Now, I want you to notice what David said. He was saying, why are you cast down? Why are you cast down, oh, my soul? Have you ever stopped and asked yourself, why why am I depressed? Hello, nobody's ever asked that. Why am I worried? Have you ever said to yourself, so why are you worried? Why, so are you cast down? When we need to learn the art of self-encouragement, say, self, put your hope in God. Self, who you talking about, preacher? Me. Put your hope in God. Self, put your trust in In God, self, praise our Heavenly Father. Self, just worship God right in the very place I'm in. Just worship God. There comes times you got to encourage yourself and stay on the wall. i got to work with one hand and fight the devil with the other hand. Amen. Somebody praise him in this house. Amen. Praise God. So they mocked them. They tried to discourage them. But Nehemiah had vision and faith. They said, keep going. Nehemiah faced strong accusations against him. False accusations that the only reason he was doing this great work is because he wanted to be king. But Nehemiah was doing this great work because God had put it in his heart to do it. And he saw it as a great work. In chapter 6, 
Verse number two, the Bible says that Symbolic and Kashim sent unto Nehemiah. And they said, come let us reason together to someone in the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief, he said. The enemy desires to sift you like wheat. He does. He desires and longs to do mischief to you. Just like Sambal and the Kishim. They sent letters unto him and ministers unto him said, I am doing, come down and reason with us. That's what the enemy wants you to do, reason with him. Never reason with the enemy. Stand on holiness. Stand on the word of God. And stand for what you know is right. I said stand upon holiness. The word of the living God. And stand for what you know is right. What this word proclaims to be right. Stand upon. Nehemiah said, he tried every way in the world to get me to come off of the wall and to reason with them. And he said, they sought to do me mischief. So he said, I sent messengers unto them saying, I am doing a great work. Why should I come down and the work cease and come down to you? For he said, I cannot come down. I cannot come down. Listen to me, saints of God. We cannot afford to come off of the wall. I said, we cannot afford to come off of the wall. I God, we got to stay on the wall. I said, we got to stay on the wall. There's an urgent call today. I got that. There's a call unto the wall. God is looking for folks who will be dedicated in commitment to his kingdom. And will say, I'm going to stay on the wall. I will not come down off of the wall. But I will complete the work of the kingdom of God upon my life. Amen. Somebody give Give him praise tonight. Amen. Nehemiah refused to respond to his accusations. He would not even enter into a talk with them. But he prayed in Nehemiah chapter 6 and verse 9. He said, Lord, strengthen my hand. Strengthen my hand. Sister Jenny couldn't pee ever. Lord, strengthen my hands. I'm burdened. I am burdened. You're looking at a pastor that's burdened. I am. Because I see people coming off of the wall. Compromising their standards. If there's anything that's going to draw people to the house of God, programs is good. They're, good. they're good and right from their place. If there's anything that's going to draw people to the house of God, and it's going to keep them in the house of God. It's the power of God. You know what brings revival? And I've been... I've been in this thing for 30 years now, not near as long as the pastors before me have been in it. You know what brings revival? When God's people say, I'm not coming off of the wall. I'm going to stay on the wall. I'm going to see this through. I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast. I'm going to keep pushing through. I know, I know there's times you get, you may say you get weak and weary, but I'm going to stay on the wall. That's what brings revival. You notice, if you notice that Nehemiah completed the wall, and the scripture says in just 52 days the wall was completed. They say if you go to Jerusalem today that the wall still stands.
God help us to stay on the wall. To stay on the wall because it's in your heart to stay on the wall. There's no greater life to me than living for Jesus. One man said, told me when I first started preaching, he said, you need to be a lawyer. If you make a good lawyer, you need to be a lawyer. Don't go into preaching. You need to be a lawyer. But God called me. God called me. I wouldn't trade what God called me to do in the life God's blessed me with in the last 30 years for nothing. For that matter, for the last 48 years of my life, I wouldn't trade it for nothing. Song goes, I wouldn't take nothing from my journey now. I've got to make it to heaven someday. I'm going to keep preaching. I'm going to keep on working on the building. Me and my dad used to sing an old song, but Stacy, I'm working on the building. It's a Holy Ghost building. If I was a sinner, I'd tell you what I'd do. Quit my ways of sinner and work on the building too. I'm going to keep working on the building. I'm not going to compromise my standards. Say, Times is changing. They may be changing, but my God's not changed. And his word has not changed. It remains to be the same. I want you to stand with me all over the house. You can't be a witness. You listen to me. I was reading something that day, and you, you, you can't be a witness with grave clothes on. You know when the people gathered around to see Lazarus is when he got his grave clothes off. They wanted to see a man been dead four days. Man no longer wearing grave clothes. Jesus told the disciples, take them off of him. Get them off of him. You can't be a witness till you get those grave clothes off. I don't know why I'm saying that, but the Lord listened to drop that in my spirit to tell you. Yeah, get them off. Got work to do. He said, we got work to do. Got a beautiful sanctuary. Look around. You got empty seats sitting next to you. What does that say? We got work to do. Our feet is not yet stepped on streets made of pure gold. We've got a legacy left behind to us. I said, we've got a legacy left behind to us. I've had many men of God that has sold into my, into my life throughout the years. Real small was one of them. I've had great men of God that sold in my life over the last 30 years, and many of them done gone on to be with the Lord. I preached revivals for many of them. They done went on to be with the Lord, but they left me a legacy. Yeah. To so know we've got to stay on the wall because we're almost home. Almost home. Him, I said, why do I need to come down and talk to you? I ain't got nothing to talk to you about. The work I'm doing is a great work, and there's no need to leave this great work and let it cease and come down to reason with you. Praise God. I'm going to stay on the wall. I'm going to stay on the wall. And because Nehemiah had a made up mind to stay on the wall, the wall was completed. The wall was completed. The vision. I said the vision and the burden that was upon Nehemiah's heart was completed because he was faithful to the mission. He was faithful to the mission. He was faithful to the mission and to the call of God upon his life. Hallelujah. Don't you know you got a call upon you? You got a call upon you to be a soul winner in the kingdom of God. May not all be preachers, may not all be Sunday school teachers, and we may not all be singers, but we've got a calling upon all of our lives in this house to be a soul winner for the kingdom of God. And guess what? We've got a call to be worshipers. We don't stand up here and sing just to be seen, but we stand and sing to worship. I said we stand up here and sing and proclaim the goodness of the Lord to worship Him. 
We've got a call upon us. Got a call to be a praiser. Got a, got a call to be a praiser. And I got a call to be a worker in the harvest field. To be a laborer. My papa always told me, we used to bail hay many years ago. My granny would drive the truck. The rest of us would throw on the bed of the truck. And, you know, about an hour or two and, I, and picking up hay, you feel like you're about ready to have a heart attack. Because the only days my papa would want to do it is when it was 110 in the shade. Yeah. Papa, my granny would bring those big coolers of water. And they strap them to the, to the bed of that big and long truck. That'd be the only days I want to work. Let's go. We got to pick this hay up. They had 110 in the shade. But they wouldn't quit until it was finished. We wouldn't come out of that field, Brother Gary, until it was finished. So I know about this hay building. I got country in me. I know some of you think I'm a city slicker. But I got country in me. Trust me. That boss said, we can't go until this is up. Until we get it all in the dry. And it'd be night, nice evenings, that we'd be out with lights. They'd have the, the lights of the truck and the lights of the tractor shining underneath the shed just so we could get that hay unloaded. We got work to do. I said, we got work to do. Has Bernard Ridge Church of God, I don't know about the church down the road because I don't pastor at church. I'm not speaking for them tonight. I'm speaking on the church that I pastor, the church I shepherd. We got work to do. Hallelujah. You got loved ones. I got loved ones. Praise God. Got friends in this community has died and going to devil's hell. They need Jesus in their lives. We got work to do. How can we see that work completed? By staying on the wall. Staying on the wall and not compromising our standards. Which is the word of God. This is my standard. This is my standard. I want to open this altar up tonight. I want you to come. I want you to come get around this altar tonight. I want us to seek the face of God. Come on. You want more of God tonight. I want you to get in this altar. You want more of God. You want to get closer to God. I want you to get in this altar tonight. Come on. All over this house.